Join me this week as we look at the JupyterLab interface and how it can improve your scientific workflow. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer at Unidata. On this week's MetPy Monday, I want to look at JupyterLab, which is a recently released project that is a different interface to notebooks and makes your scientific workflow a lot easier to have everything happen in one place. It's sort of like uh, an IDE, but that's happening in your browser. So we have our terminal open here, and I'm in the Unidata workshop environment. You can be in any environment that you have that you want to work in. If you need to learn about Conda environments, go back and watch one of our first MetPy Monday videos where we explain them. So the first thing we need to do is install JupyterLab. Our command is going to be conda install JupyterLab, all one word, and remember J-U-P-Y-T-E-R. And if we press return, it's going to go and solve what packages that we need. You may need some additional dependencies depending on what's already in your environment, but it will take care of all of that for you. Okay, so in this case, I don't have any additional dependencies. I'm going to press return for the default yes answer. And now we're ready to go. Instead of typing Jupyter Notebook on the command line, now we'll type Jupyter Lab. One thing is that you should not be starting Jupyter Lab or Notebooks in your root directory. Remember, they're not going to have access to any files below where you are when you start them. That's sort of a security measure. So try to make sure that you're at least in, uh, you know, in my case, I have a notebook sandbox directory that is symbolic linked through Dropbox to all of my systems. That's where I generally start things up. And that's sort of a safe place for me to experiment. And I know that I'm not going to accidentally wipe out any files below that. So we're going to go ahead and start Jupyter Lab and press return. Once the Jupyter Lab interface launches, you'll be greeted with this launcher where you see that we can launch either a text editor or a terminal, a console, or make a new notebook. So let's start out by making a notebook. So we're going to click there. You see I have this untitled notebook. So I'm going to right click and rename it and call it demo. And now if we don't need this file explorer on the left side for some of what we're doing, you can either use the view menu and uncheck show left area or press command B to get a little bit more screen real estate. So I'm going to get some more screen real estate and then using command shift plus and command minus, I can change the size of that if I want to blow it up a little bit. Say I'm putting this on a projector in a classroom. Then from here, it's pretty much a, a normal notebook. So I can import NumPy. I can have a markdown cell. So that's all operating pretty normal. What's different here now is I can say file new, and maybe I want a terminal. So now I've got a terminal and I can drag it. You can see that I can put it in the top half, the bottom half, the right half. So you can rearrange and have this sort of IDE looking thing. Also, if I bring that left pane back, you see over here, I've got a PNG. I can drag that in here if I want to view that file. And here I've got a text file. So maybe I want to put it here as another tab. So I can go back and forth between those and look at my text file. This gives you a really nice and versatile environment to work with your data in. There are also plugins that will allow you to view, say, shape files as the actual output in one of these tabs. Now I can go ahead and close those and things will expand back to take as much of the screen as they can. So that's a really handy feature of JupyterLab. Another handy shortcut that was in notebooks, but something that I wanted to remind everyone of, 
is let's say that we're in a cell and I really want to have something above this. So I'm going to hit escape to go into command mode and I can hit the A key to insert a cell above. Now I can arrow down to that cell and let's say I want a cell below it, I can hit the B key and insert a cell below it. So it's a handy way to insert cells and make your workflow a little bit easier not to take your hands off the keyboard. Now we're going to go ahead and open up a notebook from the Python gallery, this 250 hectopascal hemispheric plot. Now notice instead of having different tabs in the browser, these are tabs in our JupyterLab environment. So again, if I wanted to, I could put that up here and drag around, and I still have the notebook tabs. You can also have notebooks, say, side by side, which is a really handy feature. I'm going to go ahead and close out our demo notebook. In this notebook, let's go ahead and run all cells. So this is going to go ahead and make our map down here. So we have a very pretty looking plot. But let's say I'm working in here and I really decide that I want my imports to be in their own cell. I could hit the A key for a cell above and copy and paste all of that, or I could just split the cell. So to split the cell, it's going to be Control, Shift, and minus. So Control, Shift, minus. And you see now I have that cell split in half, the imports are in their own cell, and then here's this part. But now maybe I want to put those cells back together. So I'm going to go back up here to my top cell, hit Escape key so I'm in Command mode. I'm going to hit Shift M. Shift M will merge the cells if the cell immediately below it is of the same type. So for example, I can't merge a code cell and a markdown cell. That doesn't make sense. But these were two code cells, so now they're merged back to one cell. So without any copy and pasting, we've split this cell into two and then put it back together. So now let's go ahead and split it back again. So I'm going to put my cursor where I want to split, Control Shift minus. And this is one of the long requested features of Jupyter Notebooks. Is this block of imports isn't really important for people that are reading my notebook to understand the science to see. So I can go to this blue bar and click, and that cell is now collapsed. And if I want to see it again, you can click the ellipses there, and the cell comes back. But this is a nice way to make your notebooks easier to scroll through if, for example, maybe they don't care about those two cells of imports and getting the data. They just want to see maybe the mapping. So we can collapse all of these other cells and make the notebook a little bit more readable, but users can still go in and expand it and see all the details if they wish. One other feature that is added, you see I get this uh, move cursor when I'm hovering on the left side of a cell. I can click and hold and drag cells. So now I can put these blocks of markdown together. And I can take this cell and move it up. So now all of my codes together up here. If we expand those cells, say we wanted to just have all of that in one cell to collapse. So remember Shift M to merge. The next cell below it is code, so Shift M to merge. Now I've got one big block of code that I can collapse. And then there's my text. Maybe I'll drag that down here. So now I've got all text at the top and then my map code. As you can see, JupyterLab is a really versatile environment that lets you make some really nice looking notebooks that are easy to read, and it makes development nice because you can just have multiple things by each other. You can have a text file up without having a different editor open. So if you're on a single screen, you know, working on a 15 inch laptop at a coffee shop, this is much, much easier than it used to be with trying to split multiple browser windows and so on. I hope that you found this useful and that you'll give JupyterLab a test drive for your scientific workflows. Thank you for joining me on this week's MetPy Monday.